I'm Black Bright, talking post-election this morning. Um, and welcome to my channel. If it's the first time you're passing through, I just felt as though I'd give my, ah, my not my epitaph, but my last few words about um, the election. I'm not going to talk about it after this. But basically, I thought Jeremy Corbyn did very well, but the odds were against him. I think um, it's not only the anti-Semitic um, or the perceived anti-Semitic remarks that affected his him getting leadership. It, there's a host of other things involved. And one thing about the Tories that you have to respect is that they have a sense of conviction. They're committed. They're not swayed by um, Boris Johnson's frailties and flaws. They stand by him no matter what. Unlike the Labour voters, who seem a bit more indecisive, who seem temperamental, not all of them, but those who did not vote. A few of them I spoke to, I asked if you were going to vote, and they said, oh, I can't trust any of them. I don't like any of them. That doesn't matter who you like. What they don't realise is their indifference and their complacency is what's caused the situation that we are going to be in. And they're so used to being spoilt, so used to being mollycoddled, that they don't realise it takes a sense of commitment to make change. The Tories deserve to get in. They really do. Because we thought, the majority of us thought, that it was misinformation while they got in last time. We thought it was because they didn't know the truth about Brexit. They didn't know the truth about the um, the refugees, the Syrian refugees that were misrepresented. And they didn't know about the NHS situation, about the 350 million or whatever it was. That's what we believed. But they have all the information. Every single piece of information has been leaked out or spoken out freely over the last three years. So those people who we thought would switch to Labour or, or Green Party or which Lib Dems, those people who we thought would switch that way because now they knew the truth, have still committed to Tory. So what does that tell you? It tells you it doesn't matter. It really didn't matter that there was misinformation out there. It really didn't matter that there was lies. What mattered was their conviction and their principles. And that is what they stand by. And that is why they won. The thing with Jeremy Corbyn, he has been trying to protect those people who have a victim mentality. The poor the minorities, the, um, well, the people who are unfortunate, the homeless, the old, the elderly, or the older, the elderly, the same thing. You know, he's been trying to protect. That is what his manifesto was about, the people. But the people he wanted to protect are not, don't want to protect themselves. They can't be bothered. They're indifferent. They're complacent. They couldn't give a toss. They're, they're just leaving it to the powers that be. And good, well, you can't blame them. You know, if that's the mentality they have, whether they're white or black, they have that slave mentality, that pauper mentality, and that they can't get up and make a difference. And there's not enough passionate um, Labour voters to make a difference. We needed the people to come out and vote who Jeremy Corbyn wanted to protect. That's what we needed. Those are the people we needed to come out and vote to make a difference. But they didn't. The majority of them probably thought, oh, it's too cold. I can't be asked. While the Conservatives hell or high water, went and did what they knew had to be done. Conviction. And if you don't have conviction, you're lost. And so 
I hope these people down the line say, oh, I wish I had voted. Oh, if I'd known. Because that's what's going to happen. So, all I was meant to say was that it's just not, it wasn't just the anti-Semitic, um, perceived anti-Semitic remarks that have been, or the remarks that have been perceived as anti-Semitic that were Jeremy Corbyn's demise. It's also, um, you have to remember, that there's 301,000 um, people in the top 1% who are not going to vote Labour. You've got 284,000 Jewish voters who are unlikely um, all to vote Labour. You've got the high percentage or a good percentage of indifferent blacks. There's two million of them and a high percentage of them didn't vote. You've got the lethargic homeless or those in temporary accommodation who can vote, but who probably vote, feel so disillusioned, they're not going to go out and go through the whole process. You know, they're more going to, they're more likely to be looking for a roof over their head than they are to be worrying about voting. So you've lost 320,000 votes there. You've lost um, a large percent of the lethargic poor. People who are poor, people who have no heat, people are worrying about that Christmas is around the corner and they've got children who are not going to get anything. 9.6 million of those in the UK. And those are 9.6 million voters that Jeremy Corbyn could have had, but probably didn't. And then you've got the racists, of course. Um, there were 64,841 racist incidents reported by the police between 2017 to 2018. There's probably been more since then. And you've got those with criminal records. Um, they won't be a, they, they're not going to vote for Corbyn. Well, they can't vote for Corbyn. If you've got a criminal record, you can't vote. And that's 11 million with criminal records in the UK. So with the racists and those in prison, that's already um, nearly 12 million. I mean, the highest percentage is they are in prison. That's where we've lost a lot of Labour votes. And who knows, they might be, they might not have voted anyway. They might be among the lethargic blacks who are not voting, we don't know. Then you've got the British citizens who live outside the UK. I'm not sure where they would vote. You know, you've got to be outside the UK for 15 years. So who knows which way they would vote. Um, and to add fire to the fuel to the fire, you've got the Tory marketing, you've got the lies, you've got the false websites, you've got manipulation, you've got the politicking. So really and truly, Corbyn did a bloody good job, but he didn't stand a chance. There's just not enough do-gooders and passionate Labour supporters to make a difference. So we are all left to our own devices, I would think. Um, we're not, we have to respect the people's votes and um, people's vote and um, the British vote and um, see what happens from here on. I think the truth will come out now about the NHS because there's nothing people can do about it. I think the truth will come out about a lot of things, about the EU and, you know, immigration, all kinds of things. And the sad thing is, is that when the um, not so rich racists are affected by the Tory government's legislation and practices, they are going to take it out <clears throat> on the less fortunate. And the hostility and resentment is just going to be rife. And that's a sad thing about this because, you know, it's like the people who have created this situation. Yeah, the people who are the voters, they have created this situation. And so, you know, the, the leaders, so to speak, people like in the Tory party, the rich, and the well-off, they'll just stand by, you know, like in that big um, auditorium that they had in the olden days, overseeing the chaos. And that's what it would be, that they'll all be sitting around overseeing the chaos. And <laughs> look at that, look at that, look at that. 
Let's stir the pot a little bit more. Let's create more havoc. We don't want any of these people in our world. And they're not just saying that to the blacks, you know, or the immigrants. That's everybody who is not rich enough to make a difference. And by being in the top 1%, you have to have an income of £300,000 in London. And that's not the house price. You need to have an income of at least 300000 So, you know, it's fine you think, you know, I've got my little house in the country, I've got my little flat in town, and, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm well off. You're not well off. You're not well off. You have to have millions to be well off. Millions. To be excluded from the turmoil that's coming. You have to be one of these people who don't have to work, who have, who has, um, you know, um, servants and whatever. The kids go to private school. You have private doctors as a norm, as a privilege. You're a privileged individual. If you're a privileged individual, you're going to be fine. Well, you probably won't even stay in this country because it's going to be such a mess. The privileged people will leave, and they'll leave all these, and they'll leave all these little other people, you know, um, fighting each other and causing havoc and dismay because things aren't going the way they thought they were going to go. But. Well, it all depends. Like I said, your motivations. A lot of people voted for the Tories. They voted on immigration. That was the biggest thing. And Brexit had to do with immigration. So that is what they are looking to happen with Boris Johnson in power. And if Boris Johnson doesn't deliver what they think he's going to deliver, there's going to be ructions. So personally, I don't think Boris Johnson is going to deliver what they think he's going to deliver. Remember, he's a Gemini, very fickle, very up and down, not stable, stable, not a good decision maker. Look up a Gemini characteristic. I don't think people are going to get what they think they're going to get with De De Boris Johnson. But will it matter? I don't think it will. I think people just love Boris Johnson the way that people in America love Trump. And it doesn't matter whether or not he's a philanderer. It doesn't matter if he lies. It doesn't matter, you know, whatever he does. It doesn't matter. And that's what aggravated me so much when, you know, I spoke to some potential Labour supporters and they were so concerned about people's, you know, Jeremy Corbyn, he doesn't look right or... He, you know, his character and he, she, they don't believe him. And, ah, oh, it was so frustrating. Because the conservatives, they don't have to believe in the individual. You have one almighty that you believe in. You can't put your faith in human beings. You put your faith in God and let him do his will. But you can't, what you've done is put your faith in a human being and the whole world is going to, the whole of the UK is, is going down. Uh, I really, really hope it's not. It would be wonderful if Boris Johnson does what he says he's going to do. Doesn't sell off the NHS. All these wonderful things that are going to happen. 50,000 new nurses. Zero tariffs. All of these wonderful things. Good trade deals. If all of that happens, it'll be great. If he makes England great again, or Britain great again, that'll be wonderful. And then all those labour rights can sit back and say, oh, I'm glad he got in. It's not as bad as we thought. We got him wrong. He's not a racist. He's not, he's not a, such a bad guy after all. He's actually fair and he actually meant what he said. That would be a wonderful outcome, wouldn't it? But we don't know what's going to happen.
So we'll just have to wait and see. The people have spoken and we've got to respect it. And that's all for now. Bye-bye.